All right, this is gonna be a quick video on how to do a boost leak test on a Sea-Doo, uh, or any engine for that matter. This is a Sea-Doo 325 uh, RXTX. Um, if you're not aware, some of these uh, RXTXs, specifically the 325s, have an issue where the intake manifold gasket uh, will actually leak. It's most prevalent on cylinder number two. Mine had the problem. Uh, there was a few other skis that I worked on that also had the problem. Um, it's a simple fix, I can get into that later, uh, but this video is just going to be a quick video on how to check to see if your uh, sea do has any boost leaks in general. Not specific to this issue, but any leaks anywhere. It could be leaking hoses, um, split hoses, there could be uh, gaskets that are leaking. Uh, this will kind of walk you through the process, it's very simple. And uh, all you really need is <clears throat> something to clamp onto the supercharger. Uh, in this case, I happen to have a three inch boost leak tester. It's meant for it. Uh, you don't, certainly don't need this. All you really need is a uh, some kind of silicone coupler. Um, you can get a PVC end cap from Home Depot. And then all you really need is some kind of gauge, which if your air compressor has one, um, you don't need this, it's just convenient to see inside the ski. And then one of these threaded knobs for your air hose. Uh, this one I bought on Amazon a few years ago. I've been using it ever since, it works fairly great. So that's what I'm gonna use for this test. And all you really need to do is remove the top deck. Uh, if your ski or your engine happens to have one, um, on the earlier model Sea-Doo's, uh, they don't have one. Uh, Yamaha, I don't believe, has any. Uh, but on this RXTX, the GTRs, GTIs, all the newer models, uh, aside from the Spark, obviously, do have a top deck. Um, and once that is off, all you need to do is remove the intake from your supercharger. Now, this ski is modified. It has an aftermarket intake that I installed, uh, but the process is identical. Um, I actually have my friend's GTR over here, and I'll show you what a stock intake looks like. Never mind, I forgot we also modified his ski. Okay, back to mine. So, all we're gonna do is remove this intake, and then we're just going to clamp this on uh, the exact spot that the intake is coming off of. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like now. Now that the uh, the tester is clamped on there, you, you want to clamp this fairly tight because when you pump it up with air, uh, the last thing you want is for this to pop off. It's going to scare you. Um, so really what this test is going to find is where there's any leaks at all. Um, <clears throat> most common on any supercharged engines, your hose clamps are going to be loose. Um, the Sea-Doo is famous for not tightening your clamps down decently enough. Um, so this will most likely gonna f this is most likely gonna find some leaks for you. And what you can also do is uh, have a bottle of soapy water because it'll certainly help if you hear like a hiss um, from leaking air, uh, but you're not exactly sure where it's coming from. You can spray that soapy water everywhere uh, and wherever it bubbles, that's where you know your your leak is. Um, anyway, we're gonna move on to the next part here, which is basically just connect your air source. Uh, in my case, I have shop air here. Um, hooked up to an air compressor. So I'm just going to take this and connect it to my line there. All right, so that's in. And we're ready to move on. So the next part is to figure out what pressure you want to pump up to. In this case, uh, this RXTX is tuned. It pushes around 16.6 uh, PSI, I believe, under full load. Um, so I'm going to go slightly above that. You don't want to go too high, but you want to be just above what your normal operating uh, maximum boost is. So I'm going to pump mine up to around 20 PSI. That way I know that anything that I normally operate is definitely not going to leak. Uh, so if it's not leaking at 20 PSI, it's definitely not going to leak at 16.6 uh, or 17 PSI. So 
we'll just move that up. I'm gonna get the camera into position as I slowly fill it up with air. That way you can kind of see what's going on here. All right, before I start pumping up, I wanna show you what I'm using here. This is just an old air compressor that I've had for probably 15 years now. Uh, the most important thing is you wanna make sure that you have some kind of regulator. In that case, I can adjust the pressure from here. Um, so we're gonna pump this up to 20 PSI. Uh, if you have a digital one, that's even better, but this is good enough. Um, you just don't want to go too high because if you go, uh, if you go too high, you can blow out seals, you can burst pipes. There's there's all kinds of damage you can do. Um, so definitely stay within whatever the range of your ski is. Uh, if you're not really sure what pressure you should build up to, uh, safe bet is anywhere between 15 and 20 psi. Uh, if you don't leak in that range, um, you're most likely good to go. But of course, if you're pumping, if you have a larger supercharger wheel um, or anything beyond that, you know, you might want to uh, double check what your boost level is. Anyway, this one does have a regulator on it, so I'm going to turn this up to 20 PSI, and then we'll be able to tell uh, whether we're leaking or not. All right, I'm going to start pumping it up now. And as this is filling, I'm just going to keep an eye on my gauge here, my pressure gauge, to see uh, where we're at. So we're about 13 PSI, 15 PSI, still holding. Still filling too, no leaks yet. And this is looking good. There's uh there's no air leaks anywhere. I'm not hearing anything. Everything seems fine. All right, so as I'm letting the air out, um, most likely if you haven't tightened your clamps at all, you're going to find leaks anywhere uh, there's positive pressure. So anything after the supercharger or turbocharger, whatever you're running, most likely going to leak here, uh, before the intercooler, after the intercooler, at the throttle body. Um, if there's any, if you have a third party blow off valve, um, you have to make sure these are all nice and tight, especially on your, your intake side. Um, realistically, anywhere there's air passing. Now, if you have a Sea-Doo 230 or 300 um, and you're experiencing uh, a split manifold, uh, we start to run problems where it's not going above 6,000 RPM, um, or if you can hear rushes of air, you're probably going to find that you have a leak. Uh, right at the seam here. Now this is a 325, so the manifold's different, but on a 230 and 300, if you split the intake manifold, uh, that's where you're gonna find a massive, massive leak. So as you're filling your your system with air, uh, you're gonna notice a lot of air coming out in that spot. Um, but that's pretty much all there is to it. Super simple. This is a test you can do in you know less than five minutes. Uh, it's good to do every once in a while because even if you think you have all your hose clamps nice and tight, you're probably still going to be leaking because they adjust as you're riding. Um, so if you're not getting the performance that you're looking for or that you know that you should be getting, uh, it's a good test to do uh, just to make sure everything's running the way it should.